Just kidding, just kidding. Amen. It works, it works. We're on. I saw a couple of you going, <laughs> testing your earpiece. <laughs> Amen. Well, God is good. God is good. God is good. Amen. Like I said, I, I appreciate Pastor Manuel and Pastor Lucy for allowing me to come up here and minister the Word of God. And it's, uh, I, I, uh, I love it. I appreciate it. And I don't take it lightly. Amen. It's something that the Word of God is precious. And, um, you know, this is something that when you look back and you really think, you know, myself, you know, start looking back and seeing where you're at, you know, even when you're up here preaching, you know, a lot of times I ask myself, Lord, why me? You know, how did I get over here? Because I never thought about this. I never thought I'd be a minister. I, I didn't grow up thinking, I want to be a preacher. I never thought that way. I never... I don't think anybody does, but it was just when I surrendered my life to the Lord, it's just something that, it just evolved in me, something grew in me, and, and all of a sudden I knew this is where God was heading. And I didn't know, I, I can't explain it to you, all I got to say is it's just a great journey. It really is, it's just a great journey. You get in and you just follow it, you seek what God is putting in your heart, what he puts before you, and you just keep following it. And, and God will always lead you to good things, amen? He's always leading you to the right places. He's taking you where he, he wants you to be, amen? Uh, and so I appreciate it. And, uh, and uh, I know when um, we had our church and we, you know, uh, when I, I'll, I'll never forget the first time I ever preached. The first, first time I was a youth pastor. And, and pastor told me, you know, I, I'd never been a youth pastor. This was my first time ministering to youth. And there was like about 15 youth. We had about 15 or 20 youth. And I remember, you know, getting up there and pastor said, you know, this is what you do. Just, you know, give them a short sermon, like a 20 minute sermon. So I said, okay. So I wrote my notes down. I had it. I could have, you know, said, this is about 20 minutes. I read it in about three minutes. Because <laughs> all I did was I just read what I had and I read it and I read it and I read, never stopped, never looked up, never did anything, just read it. And, and it was basically, that was my first sermon ever. I can't even tell you what I preach. I have no idea. I, was it good? Who knows? I don't know. And, you know, but, but thank God, you know, where God brings you. Now, now I've gone to the place where I got to look at my wife and she tells me like, okay, already, shut it. Come in. Come in. All right. Okay, okay, okay. But it's, it's great because that's what God does. Amen. He just takes you. And, and if you follow it, he's the one that he'll equip you. He'll, he'll do what, you know, you know in your Yourself, you can't do he'll do it for you amen he'll help you with it so praise the Lord so I'm gonna share a word here and um, let me let me get to it here and I I've never been very good with titles but I said I'm gonna give this a title and it's grab your pillow time to rest amen Grab your pillow, it's time to rest. And I'm not, so I want you to go to Mark chapter 4, verse 35. Mark chapter 4, verse 35. I'm going to keep you here a very long time because uh, the, the, the Cardinals play today, and um, I don't want to watch it, so we'll just be here and stay here all day, okay? <laughs> Amen. Oh, golly. There's always that cheerful person in the house. <laughs> but in oh, uh oh, I better I better hurry. They're getting they're getting restless out here. But here in verse 35 it says this on the same day. Now that's very important to get a hold of where it says on the same day. There's a reason it says on the same day. When evening had come, he said to them, let us cross over to the other side. Who is it that said that? 
It's Jesus. Jesus said, let us cross over to the other side. How many of you believe that if Jesus said, let us cross over to the other side, he was including himself? Amen. Amen. Okay, so you agree. So now it says, now when they had left the multitude, they took him along in the boat as he was. And other little boats were also with them. So you got to realize, get a picture of it. There's not just one boat. There's other boats coming along. And a great windstorm arose. Now look at that word too. Great. Doesn't say just a windstorm. It says a great windstorm arose. And the waves beat into the boat so that it was already filling. But he was in the stern. Who's he? Jesus. Asleep on a pillow. Oh, I like his style. I love that. And they awoke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? Then he arose, rebuked the wind, and said to the sea, Peace, be still, and the wind ceased, and there was what? A great calm. But he said to them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said to one another, Who can this be that even the wind and the sea obey him? How many of you in here have ever spoken to a literal storm outside and it stopped? A couple people? Some of you, some of you are like, I tried like time after time, but it didn't happen. I've done that before. Nah, it wasn't a bad storm, but you know why I prayed? Because I had a basketball game and it was outdoors. And it was real windy. It was a real windy afternoon and we pl I played in this basketball league and it was outdoors. And I remember we were driving to the game and I could see the wind. There was dust flying everywhere. And I'm thinking like, Lord, oh no, Lord, stop it. And then I remembered this story. So as I'm driving, I was in the name of Jesus. I want this storm to stop now. And I was, I was doing everything I knew. And when I got to the park, it was still windy. It was still, so I kind of thought, oh well. <laughs> but then we started playing and I finally realized the whole time we played in the game, I never even noticed the wind. I never even noticed the wind. I didn't, you know, it wasn't a part. I didn't even think about it. Didn't, you know, we played our game and actually we won. It was great. It, it, I love playing basketball. It's one of my favorite sports to play. I just love playing basketball. And I remember getting back and, and I didn't think about it till I got back in my car and where I'm driving back home and I started thinking like, wow, it didn't even affect me. But I've been at another place. They were having a birthday party for these kids and it was wind, it was blowing everything off the picnic tables and all that. And I remember I was with Pastor David Sr. and <laughs> both of us were rebuking that storm. Everything flew everywhere. <laughs> Does that mean God didn't hear it? No, but you know, there's times things do, you know, and I can't answer why one time, why not another time. I, I can't answer that. But here's the thing, that all of a sudden we serve a God that speaks to the wind, speaks to the storm, and it drops. Amen. And it said it was a great storm, not just a regular storm, a great storm. Because if you look at that word, the word great is, is also, it can be mega. It was a mega storm. It was a big storm, amen? And, and how many of you have ever been on a boat when there's a storm? I have. It seems like everything happens to me. I have. I've been, on, I've been on boats when there's a storm. I, for me, being the captain of the ship, it's the scariest thing you've ever gone through. Uh, and because 
especially at night when it's really dark and stuff and you're going and you can't you can see the waves coming and it's just pitch black out there and you hit like because you know it's a wave and your boat just slams down it's, it's it just feels like man it's not a good feeling I don't like it I if it if it, there was gonna be a storm I never took my boat out I, I just don't like it I'll never forget one time we went fishing on a fishing trip with a group of, of, of men my father-in-law and, and a lot of guys we used to go rent a houseboat out in Lake Mead and so we were out on that we were out on that boat and that night we kind of docked in a, a, a you know it, it was supposed to be a pretty deep cove but because we were catching fish there we ended up staying in a kind of like a small cove in other words the open was right there we should have gone in deeper for the night but we stayed right there because we were catching fish well you know we were I was off the boat I was fishing a little ways down and all of a sudden a dust storm came and you know we were off the boat and the the you know you know a full dust storm and it just got really bad really quick and me and this other gentleman we were fishing over here and we said hey look at the boat it's starting to get loose and so here we go, me and him, we're running, and I'm grabbing the line, and we're trying to nail it down, trying to put rocks, and everybody on the boat is kind of like, hey, what's going on? And, and, and honestly, a lot of guys were kind of drunk and stuff, and so, you know, everybody was like, hey, what's happening? And we're holding on to the boat, trying to get it to stay on the, uh, but the water just all of a sudden, the wind, and the wind just took the boat we couldn't hold on to it any longer we just couldn't hold on to it. it it was a big boat and we couldn't hold on the wind got a hold of it and it started taking it and so me and my friend we're there we're stranded on the on the uh on the land and they're on the boat there's like eight guys on the boat and me and him are over here and so we grab a lantern we had a lantern and we start trying to follow the boat we're like hey turn the boat on we're yelling at them telling them you know trying to show them where we're at but the boat got a hold of them and it took them out to the deep deep side of the of the lake and if you've ever been to lake Mead, it's a humongous lake it looks like if when you're out there to me it seems like you're out in the ocean but the boat started going and all of a sudden some of the guys were asleep the captain of the ship was asleep because it was like you know around midnight one o'clock in the morning and they're trying to wake him up they're trying to tell him the captain of the ship was my father-in-law and uh, you know he was asleep and so they're trying to wake him up like hey because I could hear them trying to start the boat like ah, but they couldn't get it started they couldn't get it started so they finally they had to wake my father-in-law up and my father-in-law you know put his hat on and he went over there and he started the boat and you know because you need you need the boat because you need the you know the power to get back on land but by that time the boat was already turning tossing going from one side we saw it we were looking at it we could see the boat just rocking and I myself was thinking I'm so glad I'm not on that boat <laughs> but I feel bad for them that are on that boat my brother's on the boat my oldest brother uh, was on the boat and all of a sudden you know we start hearing everybody like hey where's the captain where's this they're yelling and I could hear I could hear the 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 fear in their voices I could hear it like I knew these guys were like they were scared and these were grown men and uh, we could hear him and where are the life jackets who's got the life jackets who's this and all of a sudden they went around a bend we could not see them anymore so my friend told me hey get up on that ridge up there and try to see if you can see them so there I go I'm running with the lantern trying to get up this hill to so they can see me and all we can all we can do is just hear them yelling in fear and I'm not kidding you I, I you can you can talk to my father-in-law you can they got scared my father-in-law had to tell one guy 
shut up. If you know my father-in-law, he, he doesn't hold back. He told him to shut up because he was just causing chaos on the boat, but it was because he was scared. This is so crazy that one of the guys was fishing on top of the roof of the houseboat. He was in his sleeping bag fishing off of there, holding on to the rail like this. I didn't, we didn't even know it until they got back and he said because all of a sudden he comes up from there and we were like where were you and he was like I was on the roof and he said he was holding to a little rail about that much that's all that was up there so there all this is going on and we're hearing all the commotion and then finally my father-in-law you know we finally hear them you know and I'm over there and I'm lighting it lighting it trying to get them over here and they finally start you could hear the boat you can hear when it come out of the way because you hear ah, ah, when it come out of the water ah, ah, and so all of a sudden here they come the boat is coming and so they finally dock the boat we get it we, we do whatever we have to we finally get it secured and the guys start getting off the boat. I mean, their eyes were big. And I saw my brother and I said, hey, was it bad? He goes, I got to change my shorts. <laughs> my brother, he's very quiet. You know, well, he's, he, you know, he wouldn't really say anything. But then he tells me this. He says, I was this close from jumping off. And I said, no. He said, no, I'm serious, John. I was going to jump off. Because I thought the boat was going to flip. Because he said the waves were coming over, hitting, hitting the, you know, if you've ever been on a houseboat, it's got like Arcadia windows. He said it was just like <laughs> hitting really hard. He thought it's going under. This boat is going to go under. All the sleeping bags, everything got wet and everything got, got, got wet and stuff. And uh, so he's telling me this, and then everybody's like, yeah, so-and-so was all scared, and every, you know, they start talking about this. The poor guy, the one they told him to shut up because he's, he started yelling, we're sinking, we're going to die, we're going to die. And he was yelling it really loud, like he really thought they were going to sink and die. So he was yelling. See, when you don't have control of something, it's hard, you know, think about it, to really just stand there and say, oh, I'm the captain of the ship and I'm going down with the ship. But my father-in-law, he was like, hey, everything's going to be okay. Shut up, telling the guys and stuff. And he had the life jacket on and, you know, and, and all that. And so that night, man, oh, they made fun of that guy the whole night. They made fun of him and... and and, but I, I'll never forget because my brother said that. He said, I was this close to jumping off. I said, Tony, man, you would have jumped off. That water would have taken you. Man. And he says, I don't care. He says, I'd rather try to do something than just sit there and watch this boat flip over. So even though I wasn't on the boat, I just like, and then hearing all these guys and the guy that was up there, he said he was holding on for dear life on the boat because he said he almost flipped over a couple of times and stuff. And so when I hear this, um, uh, you know, a storm in the, it, out in the water, I understand because when you just don't have control of something, it's very easy to get scared. It's very easy to seem like you're going to go under. And I believe that right here, when these, because these disciples, they knew what it was to be out in the water. They were fishermen. They knew what it was to be out on storms. They knew, but this was a different storm. This was a great storm, a mega storm. And sometimes in our life, don't, we don't just go through a storm. We go through a mega storm. And here, you know, but here's the great thing that the same word that describes the storm is the same word that describes the peace. It was a mega peace. That's why the disciples were so astonished. Why? Because they've been in these storms that all of a sudden it's peace and quiet. It's nice 
peaceful, it's restful. Amen? But that's the God we serve. Amen? That's the God we serve. So it's amazing to me when I read this, so I've always enjoyed it. And here's the thing that, that I, I, I'm not saying that my father-in-law was like Jesus, but my father-in-law was like Jesus. He was asleep on his pillow in the middle of the storm. <laughs> they had to wake him up. Because he was the captain of the ship. See, that's the life of a believer. The life of a believer doesn't mean that everything's going to be nice all the time. The life of a believer doesn't mean that everything's going to go according to plan. The life of a believer is, is that there's going to be some nice tests and trials coming our way. Amen? Because there is an enemy out there that doesn't want us to hold on. He wants us to quit. He wants us to give up. He wants us to say, ah, maybe it's not for me. Maybe I shouldn't be doing this. Maybe I shouldn't be doing that. Maybe, it, you know, ah, maybe it was so much better when I was an unbeliever. Yeah, it was so much better when you were an unbeliever because you were always drunk. Maybe it was because you didn't care. Maybe when you were an unbeliever, you just didn't care what happened. It's like, ah, eh, you know. But as a believer, you want to do things right. You want to serve God. You want to love God. And it seems that's what gets attacked. Amen. Amen? Amen? But here, see, because we all live a natural life, and we also know we have a spiritual life. But how many of you know that sometimes what happens in the natural life is sometimes hard to focus with the spiritual? Because the natural is such, I mean, we're natural people. We deal with things every single day. You know, you touch yourself, it hurts. You get hit, it hurts. You know, uh, uh, things that happen in our lives, it hurts us. You know, it makes us cry. It, it, it affects us, you know. And, and sometimes, you know, and, and, you know, we're supposed to stand strong and stand for God and stand there. But God made us with those emotions. God created us in that manner. God did, you know, they didn't just come on us the emotions God gave them to us so that we can feel so that we can be a blessed so that we can do but but here's the thing uh, uh, things do happen right. amen and things do happen but but storms do come in our lives see our, our natural lives it, it, even the word of God actually it prepares us the Word of God prepares us for the tests and trials that are coming our ways. Amen. And some of us like to say, I didn't read that part. <laughs> well, you're going to read it today. <laughs> John 16, 33 in the New King James Version says this, These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. Amen. Oh, we love that. I love that. I got peace. But it doesn't end there. In the world, in your natural life, you will have tribulation. But, I love the word but. Because but says, what I just said is going to get canceled out by what I'm going to say now says, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Yes. Amen? I like that. That's a big but right there. <laughs> Look at it in the TPT. Because how many of you know, do you know the word be of good cheer? Does that mean rah, 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 rah? <laughs> I'm going through a tribulation. Ra 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 ra. I'm going through a hard time. Ra 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 ra. What does it mean? Good cheer. Look at in the TPT. It says, "And everything I've taught you is so that the peace which is in me will be in you, 
and will give you great confidence as you rest in me. For, this is, for in this unbelieving world, you will experience troubles and sorrow. But look at what it says here. But you must be courageous, for I have conquered the world. So that's a different translation. I don't hear it so much as rah, rah, rah. I, I hear it more like, stand strong. Keep believing. Stand courageous. He's with you. Peace is in you. Amen. You're going to get through this. I'm going to read it out of the message. Same verse. Let me start in verse 31. Right here in John 16, 31. It says, Jesus answered to them, Do you finally believe? In fact, you're about to make a run for it, saving your own skins and abandoning me. Amen. I love Jesus. and He straight out. But I'm not abandoned. The Father is with me. I've told you all this so that trusting me, look at that word, so that trusting me, you will be unshakable and assured. So I don't hear rah, rah, rah. Now I hear trust them. Trust them. Trust them. You will be unshakable and assured. Deeply at peace. Ooh, glory to God. Who needs peace? Amen. Who needs peace? Amen. I know, I, I do. In this godless world, you will continue to experience difficulties, but take heart, I've conquered the world. So in other words, he's telling us that in his victory, we have victory. Amen? Let me give you one more in the Amplified. Verse 33, John 16, 33 says, I have told you these things so that in me you may have perfect peace. In the world you have tribulation and distress and suffering, but be courageous, be confident, be undaunted, be filled with joy. I have overcome the world. My conquest is accomplished. My victory abiding. Ooh, glory to God. I like that. I like that. I like that he's telling me here, be confident, be confident, be confident. And what am I going to be confident in me? No. I'm going to be confident in him. I'm going to be confident in the word. I'm going to be confident even though it's a test, even though it's a trial. I'm going to be confident in him. Amen. He's going to help me through this. He's going to get me through this, whatever it is that's going on in our lives. Amen. Amen. See, because think about this. There was a mega storm. There was a mega calm. And sometimes in our lives, it seems like we're going through a mega storm every time. But sometimes I think we make it a bigger storm than what it is. I believe we allow ourselves to make it a bigger storm than what's really going on in our lives. And the reason we allow it to be a bigger storm is because I don't want to do my part. I want everybody to feel sorry for me. I want everybody to look at me and say, ah, oh, cito." <laughs> but he loves Jesus so much. No, you know, you know, it's good to be compassionate for one another, and we should, and, and, and I understand that. But sometimes it seems like, where, you know, you, you ask them, okay, you're going through this. Have you ever been through a storm? Yes, and God brought me through. And then what happened? And then, oh, there was great peace. Well, why don't you speak about the peace that came on you? Why don't you talk more about the, the peace in between the storms? Talk more about that peace. Keep reminding yourself about that peaceful time. Keep reminding you about that peace that's living in you. Amen. Because storms are going to come. They're going to come. Amen. It, it's going to happen. It, they, they're, they're out there. It might not be a mega storm, but it's a big storm for you. Amen. It's a big storm. But remember that even those storms end. 
the storms come to an end. We live here in Arizona, we get these uh, 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 habubus, habibis, whatever they're called. <laughs> Monsoon storms, we get all these storms and all of a sudden you look outside and it's a beautiful day, it looks nice and hot and sunny and then the next thing you know, your tree is starting to fall, your, your canopy is flown to the neighbors, amen. Uh, uh, just things fly everywhere, but it's gone like in five minutes maybe less amen and then what you go outside the birds are chirping it's not it's a little bit cooler outside because it rained it cooled down everything it's beautiful it's peaceful it's restful amen see that's what happens church we do go through storms but then there comes that peace if we focus more on the peace than on the storms, I think the, 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 the storms will pass quicker. Why? Because I'm expecting peace. Amen? You know, because you know that when we go through things, if we could change the situation, we would have done it already. It's when we're in a situation that we can't change, that it's out of our hands. There's nothing I can do, you know, really nothing other than trust, believe God, and, and pray and see God. Amen? When we do what we're supposed to do, what else are, is there to do but trust God? Amen? So we see this. Now, remember, we read in, in Mark, it said that on the same day, go back to Mark. Uh, let me see, Mark, uh, we're, we're Mark chapter 4. Mark chapter 4, and let me start in... Um, well, let me just give you uh, uh, I'm trying to see what do I want to do. Okay, Mark chapter 4. Let me If you read it said on the same day, the same day as what? The same day that he was teaching the people, the same day he was teaching the disciples on the parables. He had just been teaching. They had just it's just like like how many of us, you know, been at a church service and, and you got all excited about hearing the word of God, got all excited about hearing the word of God, and you get in your car and you start arguing. <laughs> Amen? Amen. I, 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 I remember we used to do our men's home. Brother Rudy remembers this. We used to do the men's home. And I remember one time we had a service at the church and people were running around the church. The guys on the men's home were running around the church. Everybody was fired up for Jesus. They get in the van and one of the brothers starts choking another of the brothers. And, <laughs> and I remember they call me and they go, hey, they're fighting in the van. So I go out, I go to the van, I go, guys, you just got out of church, guys. You guys were running around the church, guys. And you're in here fighting in the van. What happened? And really when you start looking at the disciples here, they were being taught. They were, they were there. And even Jesus gave them a separate teaching. Because after they left, they said, hey, Jesus, we didn't understand the parable. And Jesus broke it down for them. Let me just start in verse... Because um, he, he was talking about the sower. Let me just start in verse 13. And he said to them, chapter 4, verse 13, And he said to them, do you not understand this parable? How then will you understand all the parables? The sower sows the word. 
because he had said the sower sows seed. He was trying, you know, he's teaching in a parable, and they said, I don't understand the parable. I don't get it, Lord. And then they said, the sower sows the word. So he's making it very clear. I'm talking about the word. Talking about the word. Talking about the word. And these are the ones by the wayside where the word is sown when they hear. Satan comes immediately and takes away the word that was sown in their hearts. These likewise are the ones sown on stony ground who when they hear the word immediately receive it with gladness and they have no root in themselves and so endure only for a time. Afterwards when tribulation or persecution arises for the word say immediately they stumble. Now these are the ones sown sown among thorns they are the ones who hear the word and the cares of the word the deceitfulness of riches and the desires for other things entering in choke the word and it becomes unfruitful but these are the ones sown on good ground those who hear the word accept it and bear fruit some thirtyfold some sixty some a hundredfold so Jesus is telling them, hey, they were like, what is this? What is this parable? Make me understand. He's saying, you're the word, you're going to hear the word of God. You're going to receive the word of God. But if you don't do nothing with the word of God, the enemy's going to come and he's going to take it right away from you. Just like the men in the men's zone were running and running and telling, yes, Jesus set me free. Thank you, Lord. They get back in the, in the van and they start choking one another. <laughs> Everything was taken immediately. See, we, and, I, and I'm sure it's happened to us. Hallelujah, thank you, Lord. And then you get in the car and like, Man, what's the matter with them? What are we going to eat to dinner today? Oh, oh my God. <laughs> you know, come on. Smile at your brother. You know you, that's you. <laughs> you know, why? Because we're human, we're natural people. We're human. We're human. And things that we deal with are always usually in the human realm, in the natural realm, but this is what's so important. We got to learn how to put the spiritual into the natural realm. Amen? See, because, again, I'm not saying this is easy because this is stuff that I've, I've gone through. I, I go through it. I'm not the, always the cheerfulest guy in the room. I'm not the nicest guy all the time. Right. Try to be. Mm -hmm. right. You know, I'm always trying to be like my wife. <laughs> See, but here's, here's, the, here's the thing that, that we, we, we're, we are natural people, but we got to get a hold of what we're hearing. We got to get a hold of the word of God. Amen. Why? Because I don't know about you, but I want to produce. I want 60 fold. I want 80 fold. I want 100 fold. Amen. I, I, I want to see that happen in my life. Amen. And, and, and yes, you know, there are things that, you know, because we got to be careful because it's very easy to stay in the natural realm. It's very easy. Let me put it this way. It's very easy to stay in the flesh. Very easy. It's easy. It's easy. Mm -hmm. We love, actually, honestly, you know why it's easy? Because we love it. I can say what I want to say. I can do what I want to do. I don't care about anybody else. I don't care what they think of me. I don't care anything else. I, oh, it's about me, 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 myself, and I. It's easy. Amen? But when, you're, when you walk in the spiritual, when, you, when you're focusing on, on God, see, I'm not so quick to respond. I got to think about this. 
Sometimes it's better to be quiet. Don't say nothing. Don't say nothing. If you're going to respond in the flesh, don't say nothing. You're going to make things worse. Amen? You know, your spouse is already mad at you. Don't make it worse. Don't say what you really want to say. I know I'm right. I know I'm right. I know I'm right. And I know if I say it, I'm going to get right where I want. Yeah. You're not going to be happy. That's all I can say. See, and so we see here that Jesus had just taught them. We see this, that Jesus is trying to, you know, now... Because Jesus really, I don't know, you know, it doesn't say this, but I'm, I'm just going to say this. So you can take it or not. But I believe Jesus wanted them to grab their pillow and take a rest. We're going to get to the other side. He just said, the word, the word. And I said, we're going to get to the other side. So that means we're going to get to the other side. The wind, the storm, the rain, everything else has got nothing to do with what I said. Amen. Nothing. What does the storm have to do with what Jesus said? Not a darn thing. Amen. Nothing. It's just something that is trying to stop from getting to the other side. So it tells me that the promises of God are yes and amen. And if I believe the promises of God are yes and amen, then yes and amen, they're going to come to pass. And there's going to be storms coming up. There's going to be things happening. But those storms, those things happening, have got nothing to do with the promise of God. Only if I allow it. If I allow it, if I choose to let it, if I choose to just talk about the storm, how big it is, how, how, how terrible, how, you know, everything else, if I choose to do that, then my focus is no longer no confidence in what God said. My focus is, I hate storms. They always mess me up. They mess up my hair. They do everything. It messes everything up. I don't like it. I don't like it. Where's our focus? And I'm not saying it's easy. Because it's not. It's not easy. A lot of times, we got to step back. All right, Lord. What did you say? What is the word? What is the promise? And I got to look back here. Why? What is it going to do? It's going to build my confidence. It's going to build me up. It's going to strengthen me. Amen. It's going to show me that God's been good. God's been faithful. God's always been there for me. God's always been there. God's never left me. Amen. You know, when you think about it, that, that, that Peter, you know, Peter must have been thinking like, oh man, I almost sank and he brought me out of this. You know, God can bring you out of anything you go through. He can. And, and sometimes we say, well, why did this happen? Why did that happen? Even if those things do happen, God is still with you. God is still there. Amen. There's things in your life that you've gone through and you've only gone through them because God was with you. You might think you went through it because you're a strong, confident person. No, you went through it because God got you through it. Amen. I mean, I, you know, have you ever been in a time in your life that the storm looked so big that you want to give up? You just want to say, forget it, because it seems like it's one storm after another, after another, after another. It seems like it never ends. When is it when it's going to be that I'm not going? I don't know. Maybe when we get to heaven. 
Because on this world, we will have tribulation. But be of good cheer, everybody. Ra, 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 ra. Because he has overcome the world. Amen? See, it challenges us. Because why? That's not the natural thing to do. And we're not talking about natural things. We're talking about spiritual things. Amen? Amen? See, God is faithful to his word. Amen? And so we see this that I believe that Jesus probably wanted them to pull up a pillow and say, Come on, take a rest, man. I already said it. We're going to get to the other side. We're going to get to the other side. And I'm sure when they set off, they were all excited. We got Jesus in the boat. We're going to the other side. Here we go. Let's go, you know. Road trip. Here we go. Let's go. We're all excited. Everything's starting off good. But then all of a sudden, everything changes. Everything changes. And it seems like that because it seems like every time we're going to do something for God, or we're, it seems like when we step out, there's always something that happens. Always something gets in the way. Always, ah, man. It becomes frustrating. It becomes, you know, uh, uh, you know I, I know that, you know, when I go through things, you know, I, I, I know the word, the word starts coming up on me, starts believing. But, you know, you ever get to a place that you get frustrated because you already want to see something different. We get impatient. I do. I get impatient. I get impatient. I want to see it already. I want to see it now. I don't want to see it in two weeks. I don't want to see it in a month. I want to see it today. And that's what challenges my faith. And that's where I got to stay. Nope, nope, nope. It's going to come. It's going to happen. It's going to come to pass. Amen. The storm's going to die down. It's going to happen. Amen. See, so now, today, when you go home, I think it's going to be time to fluff up your pillow. Mm -hmm. No problem. You know, how many of you fluff up your pillow? <coughs> get, it, get it perfect. We all do. I, I you know, I, I got a pillow. Take it off. Put it back. Take it down. Take it, move it around. See, the disciples had told Jesus that they understood what he was talking about, but really, they hadn't gotten a hold of it yet. A lot of times we get it, we think we know, but here's the, here's the real thing when you're going to find out. When there's a test. Right, right. That's when you're going to find out. Now they say when the rubber beats the road and all that kind of stuff. All right, all right. We, we were, you know... You're a Bible scholar, you know the word, you can quote it, you say this, you say that, but then a storm hits and it's like, oh, you help me, help me. And that's not, guys, we all go through this. We all go through this. We all have our times. It's not, I'm not, I'm not picking on it because I've been there. I know that. I know what it is to, to face a trial and, you're, and, and the only thing you're thinking about is natural things. The only thing you're thinking about is dealing things with the flesh. But I understand like I got to take a time. I got to say, hold on, hold on, hold on. I got to get a hold of God. I got to get a hold of his word. I, I really need to dig into this because if I don't, I'm going to respond just in the flesh. I'm going to respond just like I don't want to respond. I, I want to deal with it the way God wants me to deal with it. I, I, I want to produce fruit. Amen. I, I want to be able to succeed. I want to be able to overcome. So what do I have to do? I have to get a hold of the promise of God. I got to stand. I got to meditate on it. I got to believe God. I got to keep quoting it, saying it. Amen. Because that's important to me. That's important to me for my family. Amen. It's important. See, because what Jesus begins in you, he will complete it. 
He will complete it. Amen. So whatever God has put in your heart, keep going after it. Keep doing it. Amen. If God has stirred something inside of you, don't look at the storms. Don't look at it. They're going to come, but they're going to go too. Amen. But the word of God is always going to be there. Keep it in the forefront of, your, of you. Amen. Keep it in front of you. Keep the word. It's almost like we're, we're going to be that horse that somebody puts a carrot. You're just going to keep following the word. I'm just going to keep following, but it's going to lead me to where I need to go. Amen. Why? Because God is the one directing me. The Holy Spirit is leading me. He's guiding me. He's Amen. taking me where I need to go. Amen. Amen. And see, and, and so when the challenges come, and they will come, the challenges do come. I mean, there's going to be some challenges. You're going to, right away, you're going to know like, no, nope, no, nope, no, nope, been there before, done it. Uh -uh, I'm not going to give in to it this time. I'm not going to open the door to it. I'm not going to give in to this. Amen. All right, it's, it's a big storm. It's a big storm, but I serve a big God, amen? Who's bigger than any storm that I'm dealing with? He's greater than anything I have that is going on in my life. He's bigger, he's greater, and he cares about me. He loves me, amen? He thinks about me. He calls me by name, amen? Even though there's millions of people here on this earth, he calls me by name my name amen. you're special amen. you're special to him amen. amen see no promise of God takes us halfway but all the way through our problems to the shore of the problem solved amen. he gets us through amen he doesn't take us halfway. He takes us all the way. All the way. Now I'm going to share a couple of scriptures. You don't have to put them up. I'm just going to read them. It says, Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. Amen. Yea, though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, you are with me. I will never leave you, or forsake you so you may boldly say the Lord is my helper. Amen. I've never seen the righteous forsaken or his children begging for bread. Amen. Go to Hebrews chapter 4 verse 1 through 3. I'm going to read it out of the TPT and we'll end here. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 1 in the TPT translation. It says, now, is it, am I in the right one? It says, now God has offered to us the same promise of entering into his realm of resting in confident faith. Amen. So we must be extremely careful to ensure that we all embrace the fullness of that promise and not fail to experience it. For we have heard the good news of deliverance just as they did, yet they didn't join their faith with the word. Instead, what they heard didn't affect them deeply, for they doubted. For those of us who believe, faith activates the promise and we experience the realm of confident rest. For he has said, I was grieved. Well, let me end right there. But I like what it says. Activates the promise and we experience the realm of confident rest. Amen. Rest in the word, guys. Rest in the word. Rest in his promises. Amen. We enter into his rest because we're confident that the promise will be fulfilled. Amen. 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 Well, I hope it blessed you because it blessed me. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you, Lord God. We thank you for your precious word, Lord God. We thank you for your goodness, your mercy, your love, Lord God. And Father, we thank you, Lord God, 
that we know, Father God, that, that we do live in a natural world, Lord God. But we also know, Lord God, oh yes, Father God, that we are citizens, Father God, of the spiritual world with you, Lord God. That, Father God, I thank you, Lord God, that those storms may arise, storms do come, Father God. But your peace, your, your strength, your glory is always with us, Father God. And so no matter what, Father, no matter where we go, no matter where we sit, when you're with us, we're getting to where you promised, Lord God. And so we thank you, Father God. That no matter what is going on in our lives right now, we choose to follow you. We choose to put our eyes on you. We choose, Lord God, to believe your word. And we stand in confidence, Lord God. We stand in good cheer, Lord God. We stand, Father God, believing that we will get to the other side and we give you all the glory we give you all the honor and all the praise in the mighty name of Jesus and we all said amen amen amen, amen. well praise the Lord Pastor Manuel